Hey, this is David Farrow with a computer music video. In this video, I wanted to talk about designing a piece of interactive music using Ableton Live and Max MSP. And as an example, I'm going to use a piece of music that I made uh, last month called Chorale Prelude. Um, this is a relatively straightforward design, which I made me think it was a good way to build a video. And I thought it would be interesting to uh, to share something that I made just to show like how I'm working and what's gonna be happening for it. If you wanna hear this piece, there's a recording of it on my YouTube channel. Um, if you look around, it should be pretty easy to find. But uh, I'll talk a little bit about how I thought through this and how I programmed everything here. I've got my Max patch open. I've got my Ableton Live set open. Um, all ready to go for you. So um, this is a piece that has a couple different layers and a couple different controls. This is the entirety of the Max patch. It's a pretty small and pretty simple patch. Um, I'll go through a couple of different things because they're essentially like three layers of sounds. And I'll talk about how each of them are functioning here. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the chord layer here. Um, the chord layer is controlled over on the left side here, and you can hear it starting to play already um, because I'm clicking my uh, toggle to control it. So what I've got here is a pretty straightforward control. I've got a toggle moving into a select, selecting for zero and one. Those are the two outputs that a toggle go, uh, can give us. When we select uh, the one, you can see that it'll shoot call fire to a live object, and the object is being set as um, the first clip in this particular track. And so um, that's what's being fired when I press the toggle. When I turn it off, zero, there's a slight delay, and then it'll call stop and turn that off. So really, we've just got an on-off switch that's going to fire this first clip. These are chords, and I'm using Ableton's follow logic to give me my best uh, options here. And so you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a whole bunch of different things going on. Um, here, different chord progressions. They're all really similar. They all start with a G major chord and then move to a different voicing of a minor chord. It might be B minor, it might be E minor, it might be G sharp minor. And so I don't have precise control over which chords will happen. Um, all I have is control over firing them. And you can see I've got the follow action set to other for every one of these chords. So once I press play, it'll fire the first clip and then it'll follow it with one of the others chosen at random by Ableton. And once that one is clip finished, it'll follow itself by one of the others chosen at random by Ableton. So I have this bed of chords that um, is chosen from within my palette, but I don't have specific control over what will happen when. Um, this is the simplest thing that I've built here because the Ableton program is actually doing a lot of the work here. But um, it's a pretty straight ahead one. And so that's how things begin. I've got this um, option that basically just let me, lets me turn the chords on or turn the chords off. So another controller that I have is this little bass part here. And again, it's a pretty simple part. I have kind of three parts in mind. One is a harmony part, one is a bass part, and one is a melody part. And the melody part will be the most involved, but our bass part here starts with a toggle as well. And that toggle is working through a metronome. The metronome is doing a couple of things for us here. It fires this bang that goes to a trigger that sends out two bangs. The first one sends out a duration number. The second sends out a pitch number, and you can see I'm using the send object to base pitch and base duration. Those things live somewhere else, though. They live out in my um, out in my uh, actual patch, and I can find them here. Here they are in the bass, and you can see I've got three different instruments in this group, which are my bass instruments, and they have a very simple patch here that just takes the pitch and the duration and sends it into a make note here. So um, this these receivers allow me to play a different instrument in a different track, right? My, my max patch actually lives... Um, here in, in track nine, but I can actually play them from here. So the duration and pitch numbers are sent there, and I'm using a simple counter object here, counting one to three to play my three pitches. One, two, three. And that's really all it is. We just have this counter that gets to keep playing through the three notes of the bass line the entire time. Thank you. 
I've also got a slider here that's connected to a scale object that lets me control the tempo and durations here of what's going on. You can see that my scale object is scaling zero to 126, probably should be 127, I guess I missed the last bit of my slider. Um, and it's transforming those into the range of 6,500 to 12,000. So at the bottom end of this, what that means is my metronome is gonna be playing a bass note every six and a half seconds. And those notes will be about six and a half seconds long. As I move the slider up, those numbers go up. Now my metronome will be playing every nine and a half seconds, and those notes will be nine and a half seconds long. Uh, I don't want my bass mark to be too busy, so that's why I've got a lot of very slow settings. And so this is a pretty easy object to work through. Um, counter, make sure I go through my objects in order. Trigger, make sure that I send the duration first and then the pitch, which is what make note wants. And I'm also using those receivers in my bass tracks so that I can be controlling objects in different tracks. This is a really important feature of Max for Live. Um, you might not realize that um, you can all your tracks can talk to each other. Sends and receives can send data between tracks. Um, uh, especially just uh, numbers like this pretty easily. So that gives you like two thirds of the piece, right? It's just a repeating bass pattern and um, a semi-random sequence of chords. The last part then is the melody controls. I have four of these, but they all work the same. So we're just gonna focus on the one in the green block here, which is our soprano patch. Um, what I've done is taken the melody uh, from a Bach chorale, that was sort of my inspiration for where to go from this. And I've broken up a little phrase of it into four parts, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. I can play those parts independently. And so um, we'll take a look at how this works. The controls are all up here um, because this is what I wanna look at when I'm actually playing the piece, but the guts of it, the programming are down here. And so um, the core of this is the object seek, S -E -Q sequence. This lets um, Max play a MIDI file. So I created MIDI files for the music I wanted using uh, notation software, using Dorico. And um, they're loaded in here, WGT soap.mid is my MIDI file. Uh, and so that's what I've got here. It's doing a couple different things to sort of send my MIDI data around. Um, and so, I've got a MIDI flush here, which is translating this into some of the MIDI information that I want. It helps me work through my raw data. One is going to MIDI parse here, which is unpacking. The other is just going to MIDI out, which is going directly into the track. So I've got a couple different things that are happening here. If I disconnected this one, I should still get sound when I um, play my track. And there's a quite little pause at the beginning because my MIDI file starts with rests. And there it is. Okay, so um, when I press this bang, it sends a random number and adds 200 to it and prepend start. So you get the message start plus the number and I'm sending that to Soprano Fire which goes right here into the sequence. Start tells the sequence object to play its MIDI file and the number relates to the tempo of the file. 1024 is the default speed, but I want pretty slow. So I just I just did some trial and error and I found that this was a good place to go. You'll notice that the tempo is randomized. Um, that means every time I play it, it might play at a slightly different tempo. So that's my level one is I'm just playing my phrase back at random tempi. Um, that was pretty good for us, but I've got my MIDI parse here, which is looking at every note that gets played. And you can see that um, my unpack here is just getting, is just paying attention to the MIDI numbers. So when I was making this, I found that I was missing some kind of high frequency stuff going on. So I created this other half of the patch over here. Um, what this is allowing me to do is to take some of these numbers and add some extra notes. So I've got a bang that can actually trigger this message. You'll notice that when I play the file, the MIDI numbers that show up in here are being sent into the right inlet of the message object. So they're not actually being played, they're just being stored there. But if I wanna play one, I can send, uh, I can trigger one of those. I've got a plus 12 to transpose it up an octave, and then it plays it in a couple places. The make note note out will play it in this track, 
and then high pitch and high duration you guessed it live in a different track that's kind of that bell like track and here they are another receiver that i've built here that just takes the pitch and the duration from um from my track over here. So what this allows me to do then is to add some of these extra notes that are always octave doublings above pretty freely. And I've got a shortcut up here to that. The sound design on that gives it sort of this metallic shimmering um, quality. So we've got um, the object sequence, which is playing the MIDI file, MIDI out, which is just sending it directly out to my track here, and then a MIDI parse, which is letting me just sort of filter through the actual notes. I'm storing them in a message object that I can trigger freely, and when I trigger it, It'll add 12, so it'll transpose up an octave. It'll play it both in this track and send it to my high pitch tracks. Um, a final little bit of business here in terms of how we're playing here. You'll notice that when I do this, it's sending it to Soprano Fire. That's a, this one. But I've got another one here, Gate and Starter. This is if I want some of these guys to play together because the randomized tempi, of course, um, means that if I press them around, even around the same time, and that wasn't perfect, they won't quite play in unison. Now, I actually like that quite a bit. I like kind of the messiness of them being out of sync, but sometimes you might want them to be in sync. And so what I can do here is open some gates. This opens the gate, like soprano gate, which means it is now ready to receive the message from starter. And starter comes from here. It's just like everything else. It chooses a random note, prepend start, and sends it, but it sends it to all the starters. And that means that everybody will get the same random note value. So if I open these three gates and fire starter, you'll hear them together. just like having fun playing it. So um, that gives you a little bit of an idea of how this piece works. Um, to recap, we have three sections of this music that are going. Um, we have one that controls the chords. It's primarily controlled by the programming clip logic in live follow actions. So all this does is fire or stop. Um, the clips in that live in the track already. Very simple programming. My bass programming, slightly more complicated. I use slider and scale to control the tempo, and that's both controlling the speed of the metronome and the duration of some of the notes. Metronome and counter paired with the select object are playing a simple three pitch pattern that can vary in its tempo. Again, very straight ahead. My melodic material, lives in MIDI files. I can fire individual voices, the four different voices of my chorale, each of which fires with a random tempo. Um, and I can ornament those by playing some of the higher pitches that exist uh, using the long tone object here. And that goes into the message box, which goes into the plus 12. That'll cue that pitch an octave higher. And the final control here is these gate controls the four gates open up and allow me to send that start message to multiple voices simultaneously so they play in the same tempo. That's it. That's my explanation of programming here. Hopefully this is a useful video. And uh, if you have any questions about how I programmed or um, how things could go, feel free to ask, feel free to ask them. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Have a good day.